When we think of fantasy characters, wizards, fairy kings, princesses, and knights going forth into the world, we think of the extraordinary, the slaying of a monstrous beast, the acquiring of a magical object, the overthrowing of an evil tyrant. However, our own lives are ones filled with adventures as well even if these journeys are commonplace. We move away from home for the first time. We go to college, work hard at our job, travel to and maybe even stay in another country. We fall in love and we raise children of our own and usher them out into the world for their own adventurous journeys to begin. Just because the events of our lives, of our children's lives, of our parents' lives are commonplace, it does not make them insignificant. And truly, it can be argued that each of us has tales and journeys just as magnificent and extraordinary as even the most fantastical character. Such are the themes that prevail the story of Kate Elliott's Magic the Gathering novel, The Wildered Quest. The adventure mechanic within the game captures this idea of journey and return, such as on my Throne of Eldraine preview card, Realm Cloaked Giant. A powerful 7-7 giant for 7 mana, the card can be cast into exile for its sorcery adventure, destroying all non-giant creatures at a cost of two white mana and three generic. The card depicts a roaming giant cloaking itself in the land and earth of the realm itself, both in its regular and premium frame artworks. I saw this card and felt strongly that it encapsulates within the adventure mechanic the themes present in Elliot's novel, and this video will be a critical analysis and and review of that work. Please note, this review will be divided into two clearly marked sections. We will begin with a spoiler-free section and, of course, move on to spoilers. The spoiler-free section will hopefully convey the nature of the novel and its quality of writing sufficiently so that those who do not wish to be spoiled can still hear an honest evaluation of the novel's story, characterization, as well as general strengths and weaknesses. I'll indicate before we move into the spoiler section, during which I can then dive into more specific details and offer my own critique and response to specific plot points. Let's begin first with the spoiler-free section. Kate Elliott's novel, The Wildered Quest, follows the journey of Will and Rowan Kenrith as they traverse the world of Eldraine in search of their father, the High King. Along with a handful of companions, Will and Rowan must uncover and understand both the deepest secrets of the magic-filled world of Eldraine, as well as those of their own family's past. The novel spans both halves of the world the realm, and the wilds, and is deeply rooted in ideas of self-discovery and coming of age. Though written in easy-to-parse text, The Wildered Quest is excellent in its description of characters, setting, and narrative motion. It does not suffer from any rushed scenes. Rather, the world of Eldraine comes alive for the reader, and we are always deeply immersed in where we are and what we are doing, but never to the point of being bogged down in over descriptive or obtuse prose. The Garen Brig knights approached at an aggressive pace, dressed alike in male coats covered with green tabards. They all wore their hair long, the leader's black hair in box braids, the other man's straw blonde hair flowing in loose, and the woman's chestnut colored hair fixed back in a single thick braid. A bird of prey rode on the woman's shoulder, watching them with keen eyes. The lead bear jumped easily over the road's retaining wall and halted in the middle of the road, forcing their party to stop. The horses shifted skittishly as the bears snuffled, scenting prey animals, but Ardenvale mounts were too well trained to bolt. Travelers are not welcome. Best if you turn around and go home. The knight was a large man who carried a hammer as tall as Rowan, and so massive she was sure she could never lift it. One of the major themes of this story is that of boundaries, borders, and the traversing of them. Its protagonists, Will and Rowan, begin as children, having just crossed the boundary into adulthood upon turning 18. And the idea of what it means to be an adult, the agency of self, the reality behind responsibility, the contrast between law and freedom are all critical components 
of this story. In a wonderful thematic parallel, the world of Eldraine is divided into two distinct halves, much as Will and Rowan straddle the halves of childhood and adulthood. There is the world of the realm, kingdoms unified by law and order, safety and governance, and there is the world of the wild where magic runs rampant and unrestricted. Danger is omnipresent, and the only rules are those of personal freedom and survival. Duality exists in the minor but critical character of Garrick as well. Garrick, struggling between two halves of his identity, is further robbed of his freedom, agency, and even sense of self by the trickster Oko, who strips from him his memories, identity, dignity, and even name. Garrick's struggle to these restrictive and deconstructing boundaries is another critical element of the novel and has a clear connection to Will and Rowan's journey. One thing I was very worried about going into this novel was that, given the defining characteristic of this new world of Eldraine, that this novel would be a series of recognizable fairy tales experienced by Will and Rowan. My fear, for example, would be something like, Chapter 3, Will and Rowan reenact Hansel and Gretel. Chapter 4, Rowan is Little Red Riding Hood, etc. Nothing could be further from the truth. The Wildered Quest is its own distinct and unique story. It takes its plot seriously and with utmost priority and respect for its characters, the threats they encounter, and the stakes that lay before them. I feel ultimately this is a very character-driven story, so instead of a giant checklist of superficial details that need to be covered, the focus instead is on Will and Rowan as people, the conflict of their opposing forces, and not just a giant explosion of, okay, we need to mention this legendary creature, now we need to find the Beauty and the Beast castle, now there needs to be this magic card that happens in the story, yada yada yada. Instead of characters simply being thrust into events without drive or purpose, character comes first, and the events and plot points of the story are all directly meaningful and driven naturally, organically. The world of Eldraine, though easily described as Mother Goose meets Grimm's fairy tales, meets at least a few Disney movies, becomes a fully distinct and individualized world here, not just a series of references. And as a result, the setting is both engaging and honestly enthralling. I found myself wrapped up in the world and its characters from the very first chapter. The first half of the novel takes place in the realm, the world of orders and laws and safety, and Will and Rowan traverse it, searching for their father. The landscape itself plays a role in representing their fleeting hold on the securities of childhood and the known as the wild of adulthood and all the dangers that comes with it continues to breach their borders. Unlike Vantris and Ardenvale with their many villages and towns, the border region of Garenbrig appeared desolate and uncultivated. The wild seemed close at hand, as if you could take one step off the walled road and immediately find yourself lost in the vast riddle of a sublime and perilous sanctuary. The twins are propelled forward by a quest for their father, and this can be interpreted as searching for their own adulthood. They're searching for an adult, searching for their adulthood rights. Again, their father representing responsibility, order, and leadership is to be found not in the realm, but rather in the wilds, but we'll get to that in a moment. The characters of Will and Rowan Kenrith were both excellent protagonists, and I was surprised and delighted to discover much more human and developed than the average Magic the Gathering planeswalker usually is. As I have criticized in the past, many Magic the Gathering planeswalkers are characters that are often defined by a broad characteristic, which I have felt often leads to one-dimensional interpretations of the character. Will and Rowan were the inverse of this, and it made for a really engaging read. While Rowan, a red mage, indeed has qualities of impulsiveness, passion, and propensity to act first, these traits do not define her. She was still a fully fleshed out, three-dimensional character who also possessed qualities of intelligence, thoughtfulness, and was ultimately extremely clever, with a distinct 
personality from simply, she's a red mage, she acts just like the lightning she shoots from her fingertips. Likewise, Will, though the quieter and more introspective of the pair, was not just the bookish blue mage. And we even have it revealed early on that Will possesses similar desires of wanting to leave home to go explore, to learn and do with his own agency parallel to his color pie opposing sister. Because of course, things such as teenagers growing up and wanting to get the hell away from home and go out into the world is a human trait, regardless what color of mana you use to tap into. And it's likely to be found in us all. These characters are human. They reflected their respective colors, but had a multitude of dimensions to them, and they made for excellent and engaging protagonists. I really enjoyed their story, and now that it's over, I do kind of miss journeying with them. And what was that journey? How does it relate to Oko and Garrick? Well, in order to get into those specifics, I do need to get into spoilers, so spoilers. The novel is actually set before Will and Rowan's spark ignites, something that took me a beat to fully grasp as Rowan described her incredible longing to travel and see new places other than the home kingdom to which she is largely confined. The novel ends with the Kenrith twins' spark igniting, bookending perfectly this story about traversing boundaries. In both saving their father and discovering the truth about him and their mother, having traveled from realm to realm to the wilds, they depart the world of Eldraine itself, the final boundary crossed. Though he had a very small presence in the novel, Garrick and his redemption is nonetheless critical, very critical to the story and its themes. Garrick is stripped of his memories of self, and even his name by Oko, who both treats him as a dog and names him as such. Will, in particular, is connected to Garrick and argues for Garrick's dignity and right to freedom. I found it incredibly powerful at the end of the novel, where Garrick, stripped down to the most bare bones of his character, not even knowing his own name, is still able to find a shred of his sense of self beneath Oko's enslavement, beneath the Chain Veil curse, and through what is nothing more than an emotional echo of his own father's sacrifice, Garrick is able to put down his axe and allow Will to try and save him, so that he, in turn, can save Will's father. We ask nothing in exchange. No one should be treated as you've been treated, my friend. Stripped of your name, of your memory, of your freedom, but I admit we could use your help to get out of this cage and rescue our father. I won't lie about that. Anyone who can speak can lie. That's true, but I'm not lying about our father. He's a good man and a loyal ruler who works every day for the well-being of the realm. The hunter's clenched hands relaxed, his gaze sparked, eyes lifting as toward a vision, or a memory only he could see. Father, he whispered. That's right, we lost our father when Oko turned him into a stag. We want to get him back, to save him from being hunted and killed, which is how Oko intends to start a war. A war. The hunter touched his own shoulder, flinched when his fingers brushed close to the inflamed skin. He told me to hide so they wouldn't take me to fight their war, he said in a low voice. Oko told you to hide, Will asked. The hunter shook his head, jaw tight with anger, breathing hard. Not Oko. I don't remember. I want to remember. Garrick is a character I've never been much of a fan of. In fact, five years or so ago, I made an entire video where I said I was rooting for Liliana to win in their struggle. But here, half a decade later, I was not only rooting for Garrick to triumph, I was emotionally caught up in his redemption. Extremely powerful scenes, all masterfully connected to the twins and their own search for both father, adulthood, and personal truth. Even the character of Oko, the antagonist, antagonist of the story was not just a mustache-twirling villain and was presented wholly three-dimensionally. Truly, his most despicable act was not his kidnapping of the High King and plot to set the wilds and the realm at war through Kenrith's unintentional murder, but his mistreatment of Garrick, which coincidentally was his ultimate undoing. Right or wrong, Oko was motivated by opposing the rule and governance of the realm, which in his mind was akin to chaining and curtailing the freedoms of individuals on both sides in a manner 
manner akin to the way he himself had been chained and caged as a child. Where he failed was in his enslavement of Garrick and his lack of respect for him as an individual. Oko was essentially guilty of enacting exactly what he claimed the realm and its rule was guilty of removing freedoms, torture, and cause of suffering, and the stripping of individuality. Garrick and the restoral of those dignities by will ended up being Oko's ultimate undoing. And it is extremely interesting to me that ultimately, this novel does not pose that the philosophy of the realm nor the philosophy of the wilds is superior to the other. Freedom saved the ruler, just as the rules and traditions of the scions of the realm is what saved Garrick's own personal freedom. The novel argues both are equal, both are needed, and that it is only through our individual choices when to disregard tradition and law and when to adhere to it that we are truly free adults. And with that realization, Will and Rowan Kenrith left their family and their world of Eldraine behind, their spark ignited, their journey beginning and ending, another boundary traversed. An excellent novel, I cannot recommend it enough, and were I to give it a letter grade representative of its quality, that grade would be an A. But of course, that is just one interpretation and one perspective my own, for a novel so strongly rooted in personal freedom and individualism, it is your perspective that I want to hear. And so let me know in the comments below, what did you think of The Wildered Quest? What themes did you see present? And would you enjoy a sequel specifically following Will and Rowan on their off-plane adventure? Let me know in the comments below. And whether you are casting a realm-cloaked giant or just moving away from home, remember that even the most ordinary of adventures in our lives are extraordinary nonetheless. And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So thank you.